Maye, 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 takawa tua tahi ko takawa nui ko takawa ro ko takawa tapu nai o ma tua nui. Maye, ko ia te tupu a tapu maye, ko ia te tawhito tapu maye, ko ia te kahui ariki o ngariki. We're here tonight to release a group of Archie's frogs up on the Monga here um, as a second translocation to the site, a milestone after we first released frogs here 10 years ago. Well, Archie's frogs nationally are present naturally in two locations, Coromandel Peninsula and the Whare Arena, and this is a third reintroduced population. This site here just creates a third location to ensure the survival of the species in case something catastrophic happened at one of the other sites. Hello, we're in the, uh, the Frog Porticom at Auckland Zoo. This is a self-contained, climate-controlled room that we've been uh, keeping Archie's frogs in for the last six months. They were collected all the way back in April. Once they came back here to the zoo for quarantine, uh, we needed a, a pro appropriate husbandry. They all had to be kept individually so we knew who was who, so we could track their health and their weights, which meant regular monitoring and weighing. We had to screen them for disease. Sexing them is very problematic because they look identical males and females. So there's four different species of native frogs in New Zealand and three of them are monomorphic. So it means that you can't tell the difference between males and females. So I take urine samples from the frogs and it's sort of like a human pregnancy test is measuring hormones in your urine and that's pretty much what we're doing with the frogs. We're just measuring their estrogen levels in the urine and just based on the estrogen levels you can tell if a frog is a male or female. It lets you know that little bit of information. That's actually really key for a lot of our conservation management. I'm really relieved, uh, really pleased and really quite proud to have uh, reached the, this point. And it's only the second translocation ever of Archie's frogs from wild to wild. It's obviously a really threatened species. It's an icon in New Zealand on the, the edge list of threatened species. It's listed somewhat precariously as number one based on the threat to this, this species, but also what a phylogenetic or evolutionary unique animal it is. So we're just here at the, uh, the little hut in the forest at Pukiakahu where the release is going to take place. Up behind this hut is the, 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 the fenced off area of forest which has been fenced off to keep deer and pig out so the forest is good quality. And uh, we're just preparing for the release now so all 60 frogs are individually boxed but we need to release the frogs in a very specific way. We're not just going to go and scatter them randomly on the forest floor. So this is it, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. This whole translocation process has been a, a very long one, not only six months of, uh, of holding them in quarantine since they were collected, but the whole process started about three or four years ago. Good conservation takes time, I'm afraid, and uh, there are a lot of people that need to be involved and a lot of consultation that needs to take place, but uh, it's been very much worth it. It's, uh, it's gone very smoothly and successfully, really, despite the length of time it's taken, and I'm really quite confident that it's going to be successful and it's going to work. My keepers who work in the ectotherm team, we already do uh, Archie's frog monitoring each spring anyway, uh, down in Fire Reno, but we will also go and help with the monitoring at the release site because we'd like to have some first-hand knowledge of just how our frogs are going, and uh, fingers crossed that they're going to go well. Yeah. 